for me and the whole team, the Worlds are one of the really big highlights um, at the end of the season uh, next to the Tour de France. So we really need to be in a high level um, now in September. So it gives you also a, an extra push and uh, um, yeah, also as well as some extra um, pressure. So you find a, need to find a good uh, way to handle this pressure. And for me, it really worked out perfectly. Um, the pressure yeah, helped me to, to go on the limit and even over the limit. And uh, yeah, I just found uh, two perfect days. Getting a, a strong team together in our team is not that hard job because when you see all the individual uh, riders, they are so strong. So it was more or less a hard decision who we can take because we have so many strong guys. We made it uh, some tests on the on race parcours. We made some trainings, uh, some some measurements uh, with uh, specialized as well, um, and then uh, we saw a lot of data. And uh, yeah, then it was on the on the trainers, on the sport directors, on the development team from specialized um, um, to to read this uh, data and uh, yeah, find the best solution uh, for the team and. Uh, for me, at the end, uh, we were together with the strongest team. We found also a perfect order. Um, it's always hard to say who, who has to start, who is the last, who, who rides behind who. So I think we made a perfect job and um, yeah, we just saw it uh, last Sunday. It uh, worked out perfectly. How does, it, how does it work? Who draws the unlucky straw of having to sit behind you? <laughs> Actually, it's, it's harder um, to, to ride. Uh, in front of me because the guy has to make a good lead going out of the lead and uh, then I come into the lead uh, maybe accelerating for one or two k's and uh, he has to go into the slipstream again so accelerating on the back again of the of the team and then yeah uh, always on block and then try to recover in the slipstream so uh, I guess it's not an easy job on last Sunday it was uh, Peter Willis and uh, yeah, he did it perfectly, and um, he also survived with the with the four riders coming into the over the line as the first. And yeah, chapeau was <laughs> was was really a nice job of him. What does the bike do for you? How how does that factor into your equation of, of being able to perform so well? Yeah, I think it's no secret um, that you really need the best material to win a time trial with the shit uh, frame or shit tires or, <laughs> or uh, yeah bad uh, bad wheels you can't win a, a time trial that's that's just simply the, the reality and uh, especially on this course aerodynamic and material was really important because it was a super fast course uh, the average was almost uh, 53 so yeah you need a really good good material and um, yeah specialized uh, my stuff um, the mechanics did so many work to develop uh, the perfect setup for me and um, yeah I really can say yesterday I had the, the, the best setup I ever rode for, for example in the corners you really need to trust the tires you need to know that that you can go full full gas into the corners and you won't crash and uh, I heard already that yesterday I crashed some some guys so it really is scary but uh, um, I trust the material 100% and I go for risk and uh, yeah, you also can see it uh, in the results. Is, is the 58 tooth ring, is it to, to make sure you've got the speed? Do you ever spin it out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, I mean, especially I have the gear for, for the descents. So when you really go, yeah, 65, 70 hour case an hour, and you're still able to, to pedal, um, it's a really good feeling. and. Uh, Yesterday as well, uh, we had a good wind at the start and even on the start I was going more than 60 k's an hour. So um, I'm, an, I'm also a guy that uh, yeah, really likes the big gears, especially on the flat. So it's just good to know that you have it on board. Even as, when you just uh, need it for 1k, it can make the difference. So for me, it's, uh, it's, it's the, the chain ring I always, I always use in the time trial. Yeah. I went into the race um, with a strategy um, to make really my, my own race, the first half. Um, don't look too much at the split times for sure, I got the information, but uh, you know when you're 10 seconds in front, it can change in, in 5 k's that you are uh, um, back again. So 
for me it, it, it made no sense to say okay I, I go now a little bit easier or save some energy and then you're you're behind uh, uh, maybe uh, Fabian or, or Bradley and uh, yeah, then you you have to go full gas to get the time back so I really stayed on my strategy the first half and um, sure then when I heard it was uh, 25 30 seconds um, yeah, I could control a little, little bit the race. Also, don't take a hundred percent risk in the in the corners. Still had maybe ten percent uh, of of yeah, 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 safetyness. And um, especially in the old old town from Florence, uh, I took it really easy. Uh, the corners were not that easy to take, and um, yeah, I just uh, try to be safe uh, that I don't crash or don't hit hit a big stone or something else to get a puncture. When did you know? On the last four or five k's, um, when when I was back on the river, uh, I already uh, saw the car from Fabian and um, yeah, I was still going full gas for sure, but uh, uh, I was pretty sure to win it and it always also take some, uh, some pain off the legs because I was just with positive feelings uh, I knew that uh, that I that I had uh, the title again and uh, it was a pretty nice uh, last kilometers <laughs> 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 Ich dachte, wenn ich zu knapp mache, dann